Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Quran and Science. And we start first by Zabihullah Kareem. Uh, what, what is the explanation or meaning are you getting or extracting behind this holy verse? Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim From this verse, uh, Allah, uh, when we read this, Allah calls upon the, the ants and jinn and say, Oh, the, the assembly of ants and jinn, exactly. have you can penetrate the regions of sky and heavens, uh, sky, mm -hmm. heavens and earth, then do so. But Allah knows that you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Tell my help with, with, the, with, the, with you. So it, it makes it, it it's it, uh, Almighty Allah is telling them that it's impossible yes. to penetrate uh, yeah, these it's, regions it's and, uh, and to without Allah's with. help. Yeah. Okay. Abdul Rahman. Uh, I agree with my friend Zabihullah. Uh, Allah is uh, telling both humans and jinns that uh, penetrating earth and going beyond the skies uh, is not an easy job, mm -hmm. and it needs uh, you cannot do this without the help of Allah. Okay, let's let's now find out the scientific reason for uh, having this this penetration impossible for human. In the name of Allah, our Creator, the Creator of the universe, and of everything that's in it, I greet you all and your audience in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all. Uh, this verse is really unique in its meaning. Uh, as the, our guests here have said, uh, it means that it is impossible for humans and jinn uh, to go beyond the limits of the earth and the firmaments. Uh, it implies that we are within the domain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot go against his will. We cannot uh, go, go against his instructions. So it's a way of directing uh, these intelligent uh, people uh, or creation, uh, human beings and jinn, that you uh, as responsible people with free will and uh, free choice uh, try to live within the limits Allah has laid down for you because you can never escape from him. Yes. Where can you go? You can never go beyond his domain. Yes. And his domain is the, 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 this universe with its components, you see. Because first of all, uh, Allah has made for uh, humans and jinn special environments to live in. If you leave that environment, you cannot exist. As we mentioned in another episode, if you exceed 3,000 meters of elevation, you cannot uh, really exist without uh, uh, means of protection. Yes. Because you can either suffocate or you, your body will disrupt into pieces, you see. So uh, traveling into space is beyond the capacity of this particular creation, humans and jinn. The second important thing, or before I go to the second thing, imagine, just imagine that the farthest star we know of is, uh, two, uh, is 24 billion light years away from us. Um, nobody can reach that star. 24 billion light years. Yes. So imagine... And this is, this is in the first, first layer or the... Uh, this, the we consider the, this the, first, the seen yeah, part of the, the, this, the sky? This is just the, it's uh. not the end of the first sky. Yes. It's just within the first sky. Mm -hmm. um, you see, let's suppose, just uh, f uh, as a supposition, that man uh, could build a spaceship traveling at the speed of light. And this is impossible scientifically. Mm -hmm. Because if you get any material body traveling at the speed of light, it will change immediately into energy, which you cannot retain. Yes. You see. Mm -hmm. So just uh, for the sake of the discussion, uh, man could produce a spaceship that can travel by speed of light. This spaceship, to reach the farthest star we know of, needs 24 billion, billion years. years. Can anybody exist for 24 billion years? That's, That's impossible. impossible. So the, the meaning behind uh, having this huge uh, uh, separation, it's 24 billion years. Yes. It could have been much, much, much less, and it would, it would be also impossible for human to, uh, to penetrate. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing His majesty, yes. His greatness, His, his might, yes. His will, His power, mm -hmm. His domain, you see. Yes. Yeah, because His creation reflects part of His qualities, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. uh, the the greatness. is immense. Yes. It's immense. Mm -hmm. And it shows that neither space nor time can delimit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Neither matter nor energy can shape Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you have to exalt Allah above all his creation. So he's showing his, his might, his knowledge, his wisdom, 
uh, his power uh, in his creation. Uh, you see, so that if you meditate into that creation, this can reflect on some of the qualities of the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second important point, which no, not many people uh, could uh, actually get out of this verse. The verse is saying, O oh, you assembly of jinn and human beings, if you can exceed or go beyond the diameters of both the earth and the heavens, so do. And you cannot do that without the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The earth compared to the universe is nothing. If the diameter of the earth, which is so little compared to the universe, coincides with the diameters of the universe, this means that the earth must be at the center of the universe. And this cannot be proved scientifically, although it has been the dominant idea in the past. People in the past, in, in, in all the previous civilizations, believed that the earth is at the center of the universe. But the scientists later on, when they came to realize that our solar system is a tiny little spot at one of the wings of our galaxy, uh, 30 million years from its center, and uh, uh, 20 million, uh, uh, 20, um, yes, the, our galaxy is 100,000 uh, light years across. Yes. So our solar system is at 30,000 light years from its center and 20,000 years from its nearest periphery. Mm -hmm. uh, so they said, how could the, uh, the Earth be at the center of the universe? This is part of uh, human conceit and human uh, man thinking of himself as an, as, as an important Central. being, you yes. see. So they denied this, this idea completely. But if we read the Quran, and read the verses, the, some of the sayings of the Prophet wasallam. you can see the emphasis that the earth is at the center of the universe. And this is a very, very important point that can only be reached from the Quran and from the Sunnah. And can never be estimated or calculated. Uh, it cannot, precisely. it cannot. Yes. But the Quran in 20 different verses speaks about Rabbu uh, samawati wal ard wa ma baynahuma, the yes. Lord of the heavens and the earth and what's in, mm. be, in between. And you cannot get that what's in between unless the earth is at the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. If the earth is at, at the periphery of the universe, there is no something, no, there is nothing in between. So it could be a, a very easy scientific derivative without even uh, yes. ha having to do any, any of the Indeed. calculations. Uh, so uh, what I get from this verse is that the coincidence of the diameters of the, diameters of the earth with the diameters of the universe and the neg negligence of this earth's diameters compared to the diameters of the earth. This can never take place unless the earth is at the center of the universe. Yes. And that's why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is quoted to have said, Ya ahla Makkah, ya ma'ashara Quraysh, antum bihiyali wasat al-sama'. O people of Quraysh, O people of Mecca, you are exactly at the center of the universe. And uh, you see, this is really unique for an unlettered prophet 14 centuries ago to address his people with this precise language. is beyond the yes. description, really. Mm -hmm. So what I get more of this verse is that it indicates the centrality of the earth to the rest of the universe. Okay, and, uh, and uh, there is uh, wor worth mentioning also that this verse is coming from the Holy uh, Surah Al-Rahman, uh, in which it was mentioned, uh, I think, uh, around 31 times, So, um, and, and the Prophet Muhammad also uh, uh, called this surah as Arus Al-Quran. Um, actually, when, of, when we read it, we... Yes, yes, exactly. The rhythm is so you, read, you enjoy reading it. You enjoy reading it. Enjoy reading it. Indeed. Indeed. Um, what would be the uh, direct link between uh, Rahman as, as, uh, as the name of the surah and having this, uh, this uh, element of that you cannot go beyond the earth and the depth size, a human now can penetrate I think uh, up to uh, 13 or 14 kilo kilometers or maybe more but nothing more than that and the depth of earth is This massive. is just a fourth step in, in the universe, you see, there's mm -hmm. nothing. You see. Yeah, exactly, this is nothing uh, see, compared from to the, the earth. earth to the moon is one one light second yes uh, you see one second only mm -hmm. and if you imagine that the farthest star is 24 billion light years 
you could you could imagine yani, how little man has seen of this vast yeah. immense orderly universe yes. okay uh, before we go into further uh, uh, discussion about this and, and to ask you further questions about this uh, beautiful uh, verse uh, we'll go for a very short break and return back uh, okay. to you so stay tuned Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Quran and Science. And we're still discussing this topic today and the uh, holy verse from Surah Rahman about uh, going beyond the skies, the, the, uh, being impossible to go beyond the skies or deep into the earth. Um, uh, first, I'll start with Zabihullah. If, if you have any questions to Dr. Zaghlou. Yes, thank you, uh, Professor. My question is that in Surah Isra, Allah mentioned Subhanallah Asra bi Abdihi Laila min al Masjid al Haram ila al Masjid al Aqsa. In this uh, verses Allah mentioned that he took his um, uh, servant Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him from the uh, Mecca to Aqsa and then to the to the Siddat al Muntaha after the seven skies. So how he reached there in, in one night? Uh, not only in one night, but in no time at all. Right. Because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was taken from Mecca to al uh, Baytul al Maqdis, um, and he uh, was taken from there to the seven firmaments, one after the other. Spoke to whoever prophets or the spirits of prophets that are there, and of course reached Sidratul Muntaha. Uh, he had this um, most blessed audience with Allah subhanahu wa taala, and came back. He led the prayer in Baytul al maqdis with all the messengers and prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then came back to Mecca and his bed was still warm. So there was no time. Allah has stopped both time limit, the time limit and the space limit for him so that neither the, 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 the time nor the, the space would matter with him. In actually, he went uh, all this way in no time and he came back in no time. Otherwise, he could have never found his bed still warm. So uh, it's a miracle, and miracles cannot be explained scientifically. And a miracle to justify the great importance of the seal of prophethood and the seal of messengerhood, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, so, is, uh, so some people say that it's like some uh, maybe uh, saying that it's maybe only by soul and not by body. He, he, the journey was only by... No, no, because, you see, uh, the Quranic verses deny, deny this, you see. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi, all glory be to Allah, who has taken his messenger, you see, at night, this journey night, and then ascended him in the sky. Uh, you can't qualify a ruh alone by abdihi, you see. Yes. If a ruh alone, he would say, well, by the spirit of his, exactly. of his creature, with messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah the asra bi abdihi and the word abdihi means both body and, and spirit. And if it was just by the by, by the spirit, it would have looked like a dream. And dream we all have dreams, you see. I could dream and that I'm in, in San Francisco or in Los Angeles and come back and I'm still in bed, you see. But it would not have been a miracle. But the, the real miracle is that he was taken uh, flesh and spirit, body and spirit, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Mecca to, to Baytul Maqdis, and from Baytul Maqdis to the seventh firmament, and then to Sidrat al-Muntaha, where he, he had that audience, and he had time to speak to all the prophets, and then come back and lead the prayer, uh, indicating the unity of the prophethood, the unity of the divine guidance to man, the unity of the creator, and the brotherhood of man, and which are very important symbols to take from that journey. Okay, Professor, uh, my other question is, uh, that human now reach to the moon. Yes. And in Quran, uh, we hear about and we read about in Shikaqul Qamar. Yes. So, uh, actually, it is this trip to the moon that has proved uh, the split of the moon to have been a reality. Although, again, the split of the moon was a miracle to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the miracle was repeated to him twice: one in Mecca and one in Mina. And this has been witnessed by all the people of the time, believers and unbelievers alike, and nobody denied it. And of course, later on, people start to say probably the, the event did not take place. It will happen as a sign of Akhirah. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, said, I was raised as a messenger amidst you, and, and the, 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 the very close 
time between myself and, and Akhirah is like this. And he is absolutely true. Because if we imagine that the age of the earth, or the age of the oldest rock on the earth, is calculated to be 4.6 billion years. 4.6 billion years. The age of the universe between 13 and 15 billion years. You see, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to us 1400 years ago as if he and the Akhirah is like that. Yes. He's absolutely correct. So the spirit of the moon has been proved uh, as, a, as, as, as a real effect. And this has been proved only by sending man to the moon, by the photographs that have been taken to the dark side of the moon, where it showed rifts. They call it lunar rills, deep rifts from pole to pole, several kilometers wide, several kilometers deep, uh, thousands of kilometers long. And it, it's, sandwich, it's sandwiching highly metamorphosed rocks. And when they showed these uh, images or photographs uh, to scientists, they said this can never happen unless the moon has split and rejoined. And the impact of rejoining metamorphosed the rocks in between. Okay, Professor, is, it, is this right that I hear about a fact that uh, scientists hear the, the, the sound of Adan in, in, the, in the moon and he become Muslim? I have not uh, really uh, verified this. I don't exclude it because the universe is full of angels and those angels are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is quoted to have said Attat al sama wa attan wa haqqa laha anta it Attat means thakulat. It became heavy. It felt heavy. The firmament felt heavy. Uh, ما في أربعة أصابع إلا وهو فيها ملك قائم أو راكع أو ساجد يعبد ربه. There is not a four finger length of a space without an angel bowing or, or prostrating in prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I don't exclude it, but I have not verified it. They say the moon has no uh, atmosphere and sound does not, uh, uh, is, is not carried out without atmosphere. But Allah is capable of everything. So I, I don't confirm it and I don't deny it. Okay. Okay. Abdul uh, in another verse, uh, Allah is saying, uh, Can we establish a relationship between uh, uh, this verse and the other verse? Uh, can you say the verse again? Uh, no. There's a very important question, you see, which I wanted some, some one of you to raise it, you see. It's not just the firmament, it's also the, the earth. The earth. Uh, we know today that the temperature of the earth increases by almost one degree centigrade every 30 meters. Uh, sometimes this uh, rate is uh, multiplied several times if the crust is thin, you see. And this goes on until you reach almost 6,000 degrees centigrade at the core of the earth. 6,000 degrees centigrade. Which is almost like the sun. <laughs> yes, almost like the surface of the sun, you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, by this, you see, the deepest well that was penetrated by man did not exceed uh, 12, 13 kilometers. Which is like the crust, still yeah, the crust. Yes, and once you reach that, that depth, everything starts to melt. Yeah. The drilling rigs, the drilling tools. The equipment to can't manage to it penetrate of course. Uh, more man than 14 cannot kilometers. Man penetrate the earth from pole to pole hmm. or from surface to surface. You cannot. You see, it's physically impossible for man to do that. But the fact that Allah has said, uh, except with, without, uh, my, uh, with my authority, yes. Yes. this means that it is possible that Allah can enable oh, us to do this. If Allah wills anything to be, it will be, you see. Yeah. Yes. But uh, you see, within the limits of man, yeah. uh, this cannot be penetrated, you see. Yeah. And if we imagine that uh, the uh, uh, diameter of the earth is uh, in the range of about 13,000 kilometers, Mm. So you only penetrate one over thousand, mm. one over thousand of the, of, of, of the, you are within, still within the crust. You did yes. not penetrate the crust, you see. So anything beyond that will start to melt. So no man can penetrate the earth from, uh, the, uh, or go across the diameter of the earth. You see, impossible. Maybe and using explosives or something we can. Using explosives. explosives. It will melt as well, you see. Once you, it will explode, you see, you throw it there, you see. Yeah. Even nuclear power cannot penetrate beyond that. Mm -hmm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing that uh, the, the limitation of man. Man can neither penetrate from uh, along the diameter of the earth, 
neither he can escape beyond the diameter of the universe. So it implies that you are within the domain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to be saved in this world and in the world to come, you have to confirm to the divine guidance, otherwise one would be completely lost. Yes, and, and could, could human use these high uh, levels of temperature in, in, uh, in energy generation? Yes, yes, definitely. I suggested the use of, uh, we call this geothermal energy. Yes. Mm. And um, after the 1973 war, uh, the West was seriously affected by the shortage of fuel, and that's why they start immediately looking for other sources of energy. And one of the main uh, targets for them was what we call the geothermal energy, this gradual increase of temperature with depth. And if you drill two wells, two adjacent wells, and uh, uh, connect them by an inclined drilling, and then put the uh, seawater in one of them, it will come as superheated steam from yes. the other one. You can generate electricity, and this steam will be condensed as fresh water, which you can use. Yes. And I've suggested this for Saudi Arabia, because they have got really a high rate of geothermal energy. And I suggested this for Egypt as well, because mm. the geology of Egypt and Saudi Arabia, especially the eastern desert of Egypt and the western de desert of, of Saudi Arabia, are exactly the same. Yes. They have the same geological uh, components, and if it succeeds there, it must succeed here as well. So it's, it's going to be implemented in Inshallah, Saudi Arabia, inshallah, so. geothermal so. energy? Uh, okay. I have a small question. Uh, mentioning uh, geology and uh, uh, the structure of Earth, uh, do you think that uh, there is uh, some other fuel than oil and uh, natural gas that is still in the Earth and we did not discover it until uh, now? You mean more reserves of oil or something different? Something than different, oil. something that we uh, don't you know see, about. Of course, the alternative sources of energy now we have wind, oh. we have solar energy, oh. we have running water, we have uh, tidal energy, and we have the geothermal energy. And the best of all so far is the geothermal energy. And this is the potential for the future use because man is consuming the oil and gas reserves at a, at a mad rate, actually. Mm. Yeah, billions of barrels of oil are being burnt every year. Mm. Uh, billions of, uh, of cubic uh, feet of uh, natural gas being burnt every year. Mm. Uh, billions of tons of coal uh, are being burnt every year. This mm. is polluting the atmosphere and, and exhausting the reserves of these sources of energy. And if these resources are exhausted, then everything will come to an end. Mm. Everything will come to an end. An important question comes here, uh, Professor Zaghloul. It's about the intentions of Islamic scientists to penetrate or to go beyond these levels of Earth. Should, uh, since, since it's impossible, should the scientists try to go further or not? Uh, you mean in the space research? In, in space and also deep in Earth. Uh, deep in Earth, you see, I don't think anything can be done beyond 13 kilometers. Yes. I don't think anything can be done. And that's why we have to be uh, satisfied with what we have in the upper uh, part of the crust. Uh, crust, thickness of the crust on the continent, 35 to 45 kilometers. We cannot even penetrate that. Yes. You see? So we have to be uh, satisfied by these uh, 13 kilometers or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if Allah wills, yeah, he can produce more uh, sources to the surface of the ground. I'll end, I'll end this episode by what you started with. It's about uh, everything is within the limits of Allah yes. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. And this verse would, uh, would, uh, would direct our attention towards this. Uh, Professor Zaghloul Maggar, thank you very much for being here with us in this episode. And my dear Zabihullah Kareem and Abdul Rahman Ismail, assalamu alaikum and thanks for being here with us. This, my dear viewers, uh, we come to the end of this episode of Quran and Science. See you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.